Great. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Saturday in our practice day press conference this year at the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Portland Regional. Uh, our standard reminders before we begin, please silence all cell phones. <coughs> there no flash photography and no live video may be taken during the press conference. You can download the video afterwards on the NCAA Media Hub. We'll take questions from the media room first, followed by questions from those people on Zoom. Please state your name and affiliation before asking your question, and we ask that all questions be relevant to the game that is upcoming tomorrow. With us now for NC State is head coach Wes Moore. Uh, coach, if you want to start with an opening statement, and then we will open the room to questions. Yeah, excited uh, to be here and uh, to advance, and proud of our team, uh, again, uh, overcoming a first half deficit against a really great Stanford team. Uh, so really proud of that. And, and uh, now it's kind of like being at the beach and the ocean and the waves just keep coming. So now uh, here comes Texas and, and uh, their talented team as well. So, um, but again, we're excited about the preparation and uh, having the opportunity to, to keep, keep advancing. Start in front. Uh, Myers, Wolfpack Sports Radio. Coach, uh, the last time this team was in the Final Four was in 1998. Uh, what would it mean for the program uh, to return to the Final Four? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, that's what everybody works for. Uh, you know, it's been just a couple of years ago we were in this same position in the Elite Eight, lost in double overtime. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, our program expects to be uh, in a position to compete for this every year. And obviously, it doesn't work out every year, but, uh, you know, this is our goal. and. Uh, I think we're locked in and focused and, uh, again, excited about the opportunity. Alexa? Alexa Philpoo, ESPN. No, it was a quick turnaround, but what so far has stuck out to you watching Texas either in person or, or going through film? Yeah, you know, again, Vic Schaefer uh, is always known for his defense. His teams play aggressive uh, denial defense, uh, really get in the passing lanes, pressure the ball, try to turn you over. Uh, so that's what stands out. And then obviously they do pick you up full court, uh, similar type uh, strategy of denying the inbounds pass and, and really trying to apply pressure for 94 feet. So we're going to have to be able to handle that. And uh, the last few games we've been very good at taking care of the ball. And uh, that's going to be really critical and, and important and, and quite honestly tougher uh, in this game. But, uh, you know, that's going to be a, a big part of what we do. Go ahead, Alexa. Uh, Madison Booker struggled a little bit yesterday with foul trouble and some turnovers, but just generally what you've seen from her this year, um, I know you have a really good freshman of your own, but what impresses you about the way she's been able to take over a point guard for Vic and, and play that position oh, for his yeah. team? Okay, you're talking about Booker? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, first of all, you got to give uh, Coach Schaefer and their team a lot of credit for uh, uh, overcoming uh, the loss of their point guard. Uh, Harmon and uh, again great player and uh, I, but to do what Booker's done uh, to move to the point guard as a freshman uh, in this situation is is really impressive and uh, you can tell she's you know she's a big time player already and she's going to be uh, one of the best in the country uh, especially as she continues to gain experience so yeah I mean it's a tough matchup uh, she can, she's, because of her length, she can get her shot off. Uh, you know, those jump shots are hard to defend uh, because of her length and, and her ability to get, get it off. So, uh, yeah, can't say enough about her. Sabrina. Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic. Uh, Coach, what's been the biggest change with Isaiah from last year to this year? Like, what has prepared her for this much bigger role on your team? Yeah, I mean, I think, first of all, she's put in a lot of work this summer both her and Sonia, but, you know, I'm a big believer in, you know, the, the harder I work, the luckier I get. Uh, so she's put in the work to get here. And then I think confidence and knowing that she's going to be the, you know, she's going to be out there. She's going to be in a key position, key role for us. And uh, I think that's given her a lot of confidence to, to be able to grow her game and, and uh, maybe not worry quite as much about making a mistake. I know she's hard on herself, but uh, again, she's able to, to bounce back from them a, a little bit easier 
but uh, yeah, I think hard work and and the confidence that that brings. And she's had success, you know, when when you've done what she's done in the ACC and your your fellow coaches uh, vote you all ACC first team, uh, that ought to give you a little bit of confidence too. We'll go here and then to the Zoom room. Uh, Danny Davis, the Austin American States and West. When you look at Texas's film, why do you think they're effective with the style of defense they play? Well, I, I think you don't see uh, everyone playing it. You know, it's it's uh, you know Duke and our conference is very similar as far as bringing the heat, uh, but uh, you know they really try to take you out of what you want to do. You know, it's it's uh, when you're trying to run a set or get the ball to a certain player. Uh, they make it tough, and if you're not careful, you'll end up continuing to retreat to get the ball, and now you're catching it at near half court, and uh, you don't score near half court. So you got to really make sure you're doing backdoor cuts and you're attacking the pressure. Um, but again, I think it's just you don't see it every day. It reminds me a lot of Pat Summit's defense. I grew up, you know, in my coaching career. Uh, in, in near her in Knoxville and all, and uh, very similar type defense. And again, I think we'd all like to play it, but uh, maybe we don't have uh, you know have all the ability. But uh, again, they do a great job with it. We have two questions in the Zoom room. We'll go ahead and start with Ethan McDowell. Ethan, go ahead, please. Hey, Coach Ethan McDowell from the Wolf Packer. Uh, it's been two years since you've been on this Elite Eight stage. Just wondering um, if over the past year, since the program's been through a lot in that time, if you learn about anything about yourself as a coach, if you feel like you've grown as a coach in any way over the last couple years since um, that UConn game. Yeah, I need to quit eating such a big lunch, and maybe I wouldn't grow so much as a coach. But, uh, you know, uh, I think you always are looking in the mirror and reflecting and you know uh i've got things again you lose in double overtime to go to the final four uh it's it sticks with you i mean it haunts you i mean no doubt but you got to move on this is a new year new team and and all those things and uh you know i'm proud of what this program's done i i didn't even realize that when i went across the ticker last weekend after we won the region or whatever uh that uh, we've gone to the Sweet 16 five out of the last six years. Uh, so I think, again, our program uh, has the confidence, has the culture that, and feels like we belong on this stage. <clears throat> but no doubt, we need to take another step. And uh, that's, what, that's, that's what's in front of us. It'll be tough against a great team, but we're excited about the chance. Go back to the Zoom room. Uh, Brian Pirtle, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Brian Pirtle with Pat Bride. Uh, they've got another uh, NC State team on the lead at eight run right now. You've talked in the past about your bond with Coach Keats and just the stuff you kind of, y'all kind of bounce off and learn from each other. What's been that synergy like in this, this march with both y'all's teams on a big run? Unbelievable. Again, I was blessed to be in uh, D.C. when they uh, finished off the ACC tournament. Uh, and then obviously being able to follow them as much as possible. Last night I caught myself looking up, checking the score a couple of times. Probably not a good idea, but uh, <laughs> just super excited for Coach Keats and for those guys, man. They've, uh, they've grown so much as a team, and uh, they're playing so well together. Uh, they've just got a lot of momentum. And, you know, I think Coach Keats and I share, uh, you know, how hard this is. And so I think that's why we have a little bit of a bond in that respect. This is tough. I mean, you're in ACC. There's 14 other great teams that want to win it. They've got scholarships too. Uh, it's tough. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited for Coach Keats. He's a great guy. He's worked for everything. And uh, it's exciting for our university, for our students, for our fans. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Talked to our AD this morning. He said, if I accepted every free beer that's been offered me here in Dallas, you know, I'd probably be in a gutter somewhere or something. <laughs> uh, he's had to turn those down. But, uh, yeah, I think we're, everyone in, involved with NC State's really, really on a high right now and, and uh, enjoying the ride. Go to Kevin, and then we'll go there. 
uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. As I mentioned last night, the chief practices that logo three, felt confident taking it. What's your confidence level in, the, in, in that shot for her? Uh, well, I, again, I, I thought, uh, thought it might have been a little early. Might could have got another step or two in, but, uh, you know, it's ironic. We, uh, when I was at Chattanooga, we played uh, Rutgers in the NCAA tournament and got a big, big upset. And I instantly thought, in fact, the young lady that hit it just came over from Tennessee last weekend to see us play in the regional. She hit a shot just like that, into the shot clock, way out of the logo. And when, when Isaiah made that, I thought, that's good karma right there. I like this uh, because it's a very similar situation. And I think it gave us a lot of momentum uh, to finish that game out. A uh, young lady named, at the time named Katie Galloway, now Katie Burroughs. And y'all, I mean, we were a little Chattanooga, and, and we were fortunate. We knocked off uh, Rutgers in that NCAA tournament game. They had Cappy Poindexter, Chelsea Newton, Vivia Stringer, the coach. Uh, so instantly I thought about those two shots. Go ahead. Jaden Watson Fisher, Raleigh News and Observer. Wes, I know Madison Hayes was here um, on that last Elite Eight run. I know River Baldwin's been in the tournament. Um, how significant is it to have players who, even, even if they haven't won the Elite Eight or they haven't uh, gotten here, just to have that, that big game tournament experience? Yeah, you know, I think really at this point, they've all had a lot of big game experience. You know, uh, again, we played UConn earlier. We played Colorado early. Uh, now, you know, it just what we've gone through, you know, Tennessee, uh, Stanford, uh, to get here to this point, uh, I think they all have felt that big game experience. So uh, it's always nice to have it, no doubt. But uh, I think really what's relevant is this team has been through a lot of big games. Again, Ernie Myers, Wolfpack Sports Radio. Coach, down 10 at halftime, what did you say in the locker room to the team to spark them in the second half? Yeah, y'all are going to be disappointed. You know, uh, Jim Valvano was the best at it. You know, I've heard so many stories, and you know firsthand, and players, you know, running through the wall to go out to the court. Uh, really, it was just more about, hey, y'all, we're 10 down, uh, a couple of stops, a couple of buckets, and we're right back in this. And you know, we've been here before. Uh, so I really was just kind of calm and matter of fact. And, you know, obviously we reminded them we had two of our better players sitting on the bench a lot of the first half in foul trouble. And now we got them back and we've overcome that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, nothing, uh, you know, I've had people text me, uh, you know, whatever that was, you need to bottle it, sell it, whatever. Yeah, sorry, I can't take credit. Players went out and made plays. Alexa. Wes, when you were talking about uh, wanting your program to be able to take that next step, what qualities do you think this team has, either intangibly or tangibly, that uh, you know this could be the group that helps you get there? Well, I think we got unbelievable chemistry, and, and don't get me wrong, that team we had two years ago got beaten the lead eight in double overtime, you know, in in the state of Connecticut against Connecticut, they had it too, and uh, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, we got sent up there, and and. Unfortunately, I didn't help them maybe make one more bucket in regulation to win that thing. But, um, but again, I think this team maybe is a little closer th than uh, maybe a year ago. Uh, I think they really pull for each other. Uh, it helps when, uh, to be honest, most of our, uh, our role players coming in are freshmen. And so maybe they accept the role a little bit better knowing that, hey, I've got, I've got a few years left. Um, but it's just been a good match. Last year we probably had, you know, more talent because we had all these players and, and several other really good ones. Uh, but this team just seemed to gel. And, and no doubt winning against those teams early in the year gave them confidence. And, and uh, I just think right now we're in a good place. We're enjoying it. You know, we, we, want, we don't want to see it end. And uh, I think that's a – you know, when your players feel like that, I think that uh, definitely helps. Any other questions? All right, Coach, thank you very much. Best thank you all. We'll have the uh, NC State student-athletes in about five minutes.
hopefully Elvis will make another appearance uh, <laughs> tomorrow, maybe. All right, once again, I remind you to please silence all cell phones. Uh, reminder, no flash photography and no live video may be taken during the press conference. You can download the press conference footage afterwards at the NCAA Media Hub. We'll take questions from the media room first, followed by any questions from the Zoom room. Uh, please state your name and affiliation and the player that you're directing your question to uh, before you ask your question. And we ask that questions uh, remain pertinent to the game up upcoming tomorrow. 
Joining us from NC State, student athletes Madison Hayes and Sanaya Rivers. And at this time, we'll open it up for questions. We'll take the first question over here, please. Craig Way, Longhorn Radio Network. Uh, Madison, I wanted to, to see how much you remembered about the time with Coach Schaefer recruiting you and what, yeah. what that was all about and what, and what he was like back then. Um, he was a really great coach. I mean, I committed to him for a reason my freshman year. Um, we had a great two-year relationship in my recruitment. Um, and obviously, it sucked that, you know, he went to go to Texas. And But I love him. He loves my family. I love his family. And, you know, every time we see each other in the Virgin Islands, when we saw each other, um, we always said hello and hugged each other. And it was amazing. So, yeah. Uh, Ernie Myers, Wolfpack Sports Radio. This question is for Sanaya Rivers. Uh, a couple of years ago, you won a national championship with another team, with South Carolina. What would it mean for you and the team uh, to reach the Final Four with another program, with the Wolfpack? Man, that would that would be amazing, Ernie. That would be that'd be amazing to add a little another ring to the collection. That would be nice, um, especially just to feel like I'm more a part of a Final Four a championship this year would be amazing. Of course, I got the opportunity. Most freshmen don't get the opportunity. Most people in college don't get the opportunity to win a national championship. So actually feeling like I'm playing more and being a part of and contributing to a Final Four and, you know, championship would feel amazing. Can't both of you lean into the microphones yeah. a little more when you're answering? Okay. Okay. Make it easier to hear. Alexa, go ahead, please. <clears throat> Alexa Philpu, ESPN, Madison. Uh, having been on the team that played in the lead eight for NC State two years ago, yeah. um, is there anything, I know you have such a new team this year, but is yeah. there anything you took from that experience you think can help being on this stage again this time around? And we heard Coach saying like, it, it kind of haunted him to not be able to get that program to the next step. And do you feel like the program as a whole has really just been able to like learn from that experience, but also like keep trying to push to, to get back to that level? Yeah, obviously um, for my sophomore year, um, being in the Elite Eight, um, they had to get over that hump of being in the Sweet 16 for so long the past three years. Um, and then that year, um, we went to the Elite Eight. I mean, it was just amazing, obviously. But I think just learning from that experience, just like how locked in and focused the players were and how we all were as a whole and just the goal that we had. And I feel like this year, that's what we had, the mentality of just wanting to get to a national championship, not just to the Final Four, but just to that national championship. And I feel like we had that type of caliber team. I'm going to go to the Zoom room. Uh, Ethan McDowell, go ahead. Hey, Ethan McDowell from the Wolfpacker. This is from Madison. Um, when River and Mimi were had to sit because of foul trouble yesterday, I know rebounding is something you always care a lot about, but last night where you kind of like, oh, man, I need to take even more responsibility in that area. Um, I mean, yeah, of course. Um, I mean, um, rebounding is a part of my game. Um, just I did whatever I could do to help my team. That's what I always do every game. Um, it's nothing that, oh, I got to do it now. It's I know I need to. Um, that's just me naturally. So I think, you know, obviously getting those rebounds were really crucial for the game yesterday, the other day. Good. Um, Danny Davis with the Austin American Statesman. For either of the players, what stands out about this Texas team? Stands out. So we watched a little bit of film on them this morning. Of course, we'll scout, go over there, scout um, at practice in a little Close bit. To the mic, please. Close. Oh, is this is this better? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, we watched a little bit of film this morning. And obviously, we'll scout, see how we're going to play them best later at practice. But I think their bigs are stronger. I think if we limit their second chance opportunities, um, crashing the boards, I think we'll be fine. Um, they have some shooters. I think if we can contest those, make them put it on the floor and attack the basket, I think we'll um, have more of a chance. So. Mezzo. Oh, um, I mean, I agree with what Naya said. Um, just that, you know, they have a couple of shooters. Obviously, um, they are athletic. Um, we just got to make sure they are pretty deep. So we just got to make sure we don't foul as much, um, obviously, as you saw yesterday. Um, but, you know, I feel like we'll be fine. We just got to do what we did yesterday, the whole second half and first half that we did. I feel like we just got to keep it going from the whole game. Go back to the Zoom room. Uh, Brian Pirtle, go ahead, please. Hey, Brian Pirtle with Pack Pride. This is for either player. It seems like a pretty good time to be a, a part of the Wolfpack with both y'all and the men's team now in the Elite Eight. What's been that kind of synergy like between both between both of y'all's teams on a run here? 
Um, I mean, it's just amazing. You know, the men's team, you know, everybody's been doubting them since they went into the ACC tournament. And you obviously saw that, you know, they won five games in a row. And our, you know, Coach Moore obviously talked about that's just energy and competitiveness, that's urgency. I mean, it's just heart. Um, they're doing a great job. Um, and I commend them for how far they've gone. And it doesn't stop there for them and not for us either. Um, we can go even farther for us too. So, yeah. Yeah, and I don't think we just look at them as our men's team. Those are like our brothers. You know, mm -hmm. we've been supporting them. When everyone was doubting them, you know, we were saying, nah, they're going to they gonna make a good run here, and they're still going. So they started, you know, why not us? But now we're saying, like, why not the pack in general? You know, why not us either? So, yeah. 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 <laughs> you, like, you like that one, Ernie? You like that one? <laughs> going back to the Zoom room, uh, Ethan McDowell, go ahead, and then we'll have Kevin in the room. Hey, this is for either player, but – Coach Moore said during halftime of last night, he didn't necessarily deliver some like incredible motivational speech. He just let you know that you know you've been here before, and that obviously you obviously responded to that. Um, what do you both appreciate about his approach to in-game coaching? Um, I think what I appreciate the most about Coach Moore is he, when he knows that we're down, he's not going to put us down more. You know, he's going to motivate us. He's going to say some things that we need to do differently going into the second half. Um, he just really motivates us all in all, whether he says something, whether he taps us on the back, whatever the case may be. Um, I, think, I think that's what I commend most about him. Um, I think also that he just trusts us to um, talk to each other and just hold each other accountable when it comes to, you know, uh, smaller mistakes, mental mistakes. And I feel like obviously going into the second half, we pulled it together and we did what we were supposed to do. Kevin? Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. Tonight, is there anybody you've modeled your game after? Is that just, you know, sort of how you've always played? Well, when I was in high school, a lot of people compared me to Michael Jordan. I don't know if that was just because or because I went to his old high school. Um, either way, you know, I take it as a big compliment. Um, as I got a little older, I think I started modeling my game to KD just because I was so much longer than the people that I was playing against in high school. So I really took that. Um, I don't know. People compare me to a lot of people, but I think <laughs> I just play my game, and whoever they compare me to, you know, they compare me to. So, <laughs> yeah. Go back to the Zoom room. Uh, Brian Pirtle, go ahead. Hey, uh, we talked to Coach Moore a little bit ago. He was talking about how this Texas team really plays a high press, kind of similar to Duke and the ACC. Mm -hmm. How much does that help seeing that seeing that style of play earlier in the season? Oh, okay. Um, I feel like it kind of helps us, you know, that we've already played somebody that's, you know, obviously pressures the ball a lot, um, especially on the wings. Um, and obviously denying our post, I feel like that'll help us, especially going into this game, um, just making sure that we know we utilize our fundamentals going back door, doing a bunch of things that will help us um, get some easy points. Um, obviously, our transition game will be a lot easier for us as well. So, yeah. Uh, just to touch on the transition piece, I definitely think if we can get into that early, that that'll help us. Uh, I feel like transition is our bread and butter. I mm -hmm. feel like we're a really fast team. We can get it out. Anybody can push it. Anybody can score it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's definitely going to be the key tomorrow. Any other questions for our student athletes? Thank you both very much. Appreciate your time and best of luck tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Texas head coach Vic Schaefer will be at 1150.